Uh-oh. Something is nearing the surface of the planet. It looks like a fireball hurtling closer and closer at a truly incredible speed. Soon, it becomes obvious that the collision is inevitable. BAM! The impact leaves a huge crater. It evaporates thousands of cubic miles of solid rock, and it also sets off a series of terrible natural disasters. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You believe I'm talking about the catastrophic collision that occurred around 66 million years ago on Earth. You know, the one that's responsible for the extinction of non-avian dinosaurs and three-quarters of other life forms on our planet? But no, the disaster I'm talking about happened on a different planet. Scientists think that our close neighbor, Mars, once experienced the same catastrophe that struck Earth. It happened around 3.4 billion years ago. An asteroid collision might have caused a mega tsunami on the red planet, similar to the one that caused the Chicxulub impact on Earth. Scientists have identified an impact crater on Mars that was probably left by a comet or asteroid collision with the surface of the planet. Most likely, the space body landed in an ocean in the Martian northern lowlands, and the impact was so powerful that it caused a mega tsunami. Before the latest studies, the exact location of the impact crater wasn't verified, it was just a theory. To confirm it, a team of astronomers simulated a comet and asteroid collision in the area where they supposed the impact crater was. They even named this crater Paul. Paul is 68 miles across and lies in a region that is almost 400 feet below the supposed sea level. Anyway, the simulations form several craters of the same size as Paul. One of the simulations claimed that these craters had been left by a 5-mile-wide asteroid that had encountered strong ground resistance. The other simulation showed that the craters had been caused by a bit smaller asteroid that met a weaker ground resistance. But according to both simulations, the impact crater was almost 70 miles in diameter, and the collisions produced mega tsunamis up to 900 miles away from the center of the impact site. The simulations also help scientists estimate the height of the tsunami. It was about 820 feet tall, almost as tall as the Eiffel Tower. The authors of the study also suggest that the Pole crater might be similar to the Chicxulub impact crater on our planet. The Chicxulub asteroid, as we now know it, is believed to come from the outer reaches of the solar system. This space body was at least 6 miles across. It crashed into the shallow seawaters near the Yucatan Peninsula. This splashdown was so powerful that it left its signature on the entire face of the planet. In 2021, researchers found out that the collision had carved mega-ripples into Earth's crust in the region of modern-day central Louisiana. An even newer study suggests that the asteroid also triggered a tsunami so devastating it eroded seafloor sediments half a world away. The team of scientists remodeled the events of the first 10 minutes after the impact, and the model showed that the asteroid had produced waves up to 30,000 times greater than one of the largest tsunamis people have ever recorded, the Indian Ocean tsunami that hit Indonesia in 2004. The collision displaced so much water that it created a wave almost a mile high. That's like two Burj Khalifas, which is the tallest construction in the world, stacked one on top of the other. And of course, all that empty space didn't stay empty for long. The ocean gushed back to fill the crater. But in the process, it only ricocheted off the crater's rim, which produced even more waves. After that, Tsunami waves that were more than 33 feet tall traveled around the world at a speed of 3 feet per second, lashing at all coastlines on their way. Imagine a three-story building rushing up to you. No wonder the largest and fastest-moving waves occurred near the impact area in the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Those rose more than 330 feet tall, which is taller than the Statue of Liberty, and moved at a speed 10 times greater than more distant tsunami waves. But back to the red planet. Some experts think that not one, but two mega tsunamis could happen on Mars. They could be triggered by a pair of meteor impacts that were several millions of years apart. Between these two collisions, Mars went through a period of climate changes. As a result, liquid water on its surface turned into ice. In other words, the first asteroid impact most likely produced waves composed of liquid water. 
and the second tsunami was probably formed by rounded chunks of ice water. By the way, the largest asteroid to have ever crashed into Earth might not actually be the one that ended dinosaurs. A much more catastrophic collision likely happened about 3.5 billion years ago. New evidence scientists found in northwestern Australia suggests that the asteroid I'm talking about was 12 to 18 miles across. It struck Earth at an immense speed, releasing an unimaginable amount of energy. Now, this made me think. What if something like that happened these days? More than 30,000 objects that are circling Earth these days could potentially crash into our planet. NASA considers around 1,500 of them to be potentially hazardous. These space rocks are the remains left after the solar system was formed some 4.6 billion years ago. For example, in 2004, astronomers discovered a huge asteroid nearing Earth. The first observation showed that the chance of the space rock hitting our planet was less than 3%. The asteroid was named Apophis. It's more than 1,200 feet across and weighs about 20 million tons. It's supposed to streak across the sky on April 13, 2029. Apophis will pass at a distance of 19,000 miles away from Earth's surface. But even though this space rock might miss our planet in 2029, it doesn't mean it won't return 15 years later in 2036. If such an object hits our planet, the consequences will be unpredictable. They can vary from shattered glass and broken windows to most life forms getting wiped off the face of the Earth. And it'll probably affect the internet. Now that last thought is truly scary. But luckily, modern technologies are likely to help us avoid any catastrophic consequences. Experts have developed several ways to prevent a real-life disaster movie from happening. For one thing, we could use a spacecraft to knock this visitor from outer space off its course. Or it could somehow be blasted into pieces. Scientists could also slow the thing down with the help of concentrated sunlight. Or people could tug it away with a gravity tractor. That's a theoretical spacecraft that can influence objects in space without touching them. In sci-fi movies, a huge asteroid often sneaks up on Earth and turns out to be a nasty surprise to astronomers. It hurtles toward our planet at breakneck speed and gets discovered just weeks or even days before the collision. In reality, scientists are constantly watching all large objects in Earth's neighborhood. It means there would be plenty of time to do something before the inevitable happened. There are three kinds of missions scientists could prepare at short notice. Type 0, when a heavy spacecraft hurdles toward the intruder with one single goal – to knock it off its course. In this case, astronomers would have to rely on the already available information. The Type 1 mission would involve a scout. It would be launched first to get more close-up information about the space rock. Only after that, the main spacecraft would be launched. With more precise information, its journey would be way more productive. And if scientists chose the Type 2 mission, they would send a scout and a small spacecraft at the same time. The spacecraft would knock the asteroid a bit off its course. Then the scout would collect all the necessary information. Based on this data, the spacecraft would finish its job with a more fine-tuned second push. If none of these methods work, people could try going deep underground or even build a shelter on the ocean floor. But in this case, we'd need to find sources of energy that could help us survive for at least several decades. Plus, people would have to create a life support system that could somehow keep air and water fresh. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.